So where are we going now? We're going to the Lakeside Holiday Camp. Which I'm guessing is where that girl was, Rebecca? Who's Lizzie's little spirit having a fight with there, Anne? Hey? Mrs. Great! Lizzie, Mrs. Great! Rachel? Hey, what on earth's going on? It's been awful. The thunder and the lightning and all the power went out. And everyone was in the hall, so I told them all to stay put. And then Sean. Sean Davis said he was going to be told what to do by a stupid bloody girl and went out for a cigarette. And then Dick come back. And then Di, she went out after him and she didn't come back either. Where is Dylan? Was he with Sean and Di? No, I'd be looking after him. Do you think they'll come back? I don't know, Rachel. I don't care what anyone thinks. I just know if he was my baby, I could never leave him. Even if the whole world was coming to an end, I'd make sure he came first. You'd be a good mum, Rachel. Oh, don't worry. It's fine. Go, go back inside and tell everyone that they're doing a great job. A really wonderful job. I just got a few things to finish up here, and then I'll come in and join you. Right. Go on. So disappearance is not sparing the children's holiday either. And the Great British Rain there. Ruining all summer holidays for everyone. Oh gosh, so we've got quite a little area to explore here. Starting with figuring out where that phone is. Is this a little post office? Oh my god, that's cute. Piece of hand rehearsals tonight, 6pm in the main hall. Missing, John Coles. John is an elderly resident and is often seen around the camp. Okay, so keep an eye out for his spirit, I guess. So I guess this is like a, a summer holiday camp. Right, let's get in the dry and see what this phone says. You can't save them. Just pack a case and meet me at the station. They've closed the lines. Weren't you listening to the radio? Because of the flu. There is no flu, Lizzie. Oh, Christ, Stephen, I'm not stupid. Of course there's no flu. But the stations are still closed. There's an access footpath that runs alongside the main tunnel. You can get out that way. They won't have thought of it. You know what's going on, don't you? You can't use the phone anymore. Well, like you're not using one right now. Funny. Listen. Just don't use the phone after this. No TV or radio either. It can hide in the signal. Oh, you make it sound like it's alive. I don't think we have a word for what it is. Just promise me. Don't tell anyone. Pack quietly. Meet me at the station tomorrow, all right? I feel awful lying and leaving all these people here. It was a brilliant idea about the show. Top marks for that, you clever thing. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, Stephen. So, he got rid of... Well, got not got rid of it, turned his back on Kate. And went for Lizzie instead. Naughty, naughty, naughty. So one thing I wanted to talk about was um, one of the reasons why I was so excited to see uh, this game. And it's because the devs on their blog recently said that one of the things they were inspired by was 1960s, 1970s um, English sci-fi fiction, including um, a book called The Death of Grass by um, an author called John Christopher, which I think I mentioned in one of my playthroughs recently. And it's an absolutely fascinating book, and I highly recommend you read it. It's... Um, one of these, what, one thing I love about sci-fi is a lot of it's written, you know, ye olde times, 1960s, 1970s, even further back. But their insight and perception as to the modern world or what is happening in the future, which is now their future and our present, is utterly terrifying how right they get it. So The Death of Grass kind of is set in England. And the idea is that um, this kind of virus has mutated. Oh, someone's been here recently. Um, a virus has mutated that kills grasses, so wheat, rice, sort of like an interstellar. And basically there's a world global famine and it kind of describes the spread from Asia across the continents to England. This is a public service announcement from Hamilton District Council Emergency Measures Committee. Road and rail closures are being implemented to help contain the outbreak of influenza. Please remain calm and indoors. 
Local community leaders, head teachers, scoutmasters, and members of the clergy will act as your representatives during this period. Be sure to report any symptoms of illness. I've no idea why there was no subtitles there. Um, and where is that bloody phone? So it looks like they were all set for um, Peter Pan, but again, it's another refuge here. Not going well, though, as you can see by all the blood on the floor. But yeah, so the death of grass kind of goes over, well, what, what would happen in a wide, worldwide famine and, you know, how people deal with it, how the government deals with it by kind of all out lying um, to the public about what's going on, about their plans. Um, and yeah, like, it, it documents this um, family's attempt to survive and travel to his brother's farm out in the country who kind of foresaw all this and, you know, um, has tried to build up a community and defences of his own to survive. And it's that kind of, you know, that gradual breakdown of society and everyone setting out to try and well, survive in this world that makes no sense anymore. Um, but yeah, absolutely recommend you read that. And um, his other book I want to read um, is called A Wrinkle on the Skin. Again, this was named in kind of things that inspired the devs. Uh, right, so I'm guessing this is the phone that we heard from inside. And then we'll go and see the light on the other side there. Hi, this is Kate Collins and Stephen Appleton. Leave a message. Stephen, it's me. I'm leaving. I've waited as long as I can. If you are there to meet me, I'm leaving for the station now, but I am going anyway, whether you're there or not. But I love you. Please be there. I love you. So she went to meet him at the station, but he never turned up, so... Did something happen to Stephen, or did he have second thoughts? So we're here. Um, just wondering whether or not to do this... Check down here. So it says Snowdrop. Is that the camper van? The, the road down to the camper van? I guess so. Let's have a quick look. This place is just so... open, it's a little hard to keep track of where you need to be going. And with this eternal rain, it's reminding me of Batman Arkham Asylum. No, Arkham City. No, Arkham Knight. <laughs> Got there in the end. That game is good if you want to have a good sulk. Just sit on a gargoyle in the city and have a sulk. So this looks pretty depressing, this kind of holiday camp here. I've only ever been to one in the UK, a kind of kids camp, and that's PGL. Usual kind of kiddies activities parents send you when they want a holiday from you. Right, what can I see here? I've got to activate this one. So if I move the controller there... Got it. And you found it like this? Yeah. I got into the habit of checking in first thing in the morning just to make sure he's had his pills. Mr. Coles is not a well man, Elizabeth. It's entirely possible he upped and wandered off. If things progressed, the mind can be a fragile thing, you know? It's just not very like him, that's all I'm saying, Doctor. He never misses the mid-morning bingo. He didn't smoke, did he? Not that I knew of. There's a funny... It's like ash. Well, that, that is odd. Reese cleaned in here yesterday afternoon. I'll have to have a word. It's not like cigarette ash. Strange. Dr. Wade, there's just been a phone call. We need it back at the village. Apparently, Mrs. Barton has disappeared. So I guess this is near the beginning of all the uh, disappearances. So this must be that John Cole's um, living space. This is respirator. So I guess at first people must have penned it down to, you know, just old people going missing. So what, you know? But then as more and more people up and go, and as they mentioned, Mrs. Boughton, well, they said she, she had an amputated leg. So begs the question, how far could she go? Can I interact with this? Ooh. It's quite something, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You ever seen anything like it? They must be well happy at the observatory place. They're probably all partying there right now. This is right, post. <laughs> it is. Right. 
Bless me, short leash. Kids up half a night, bloody teething. Mrs. will kill me if I'm gone too long. <laughs> Good night, mate. No. I... <laughs> Having a cheeky little smoke. But yeah, all the kind of orbs of light seem to have different personalities. So Lizzie seems to be a bit more frantic and being chased by something else. It's also weird that all of this seems to be recent. Like, there's still stuff smoking. Yeah, look, it's being chased by something else. I also noticed that Frank's, like, sometimes the sound that you heard with it, Frank's had the sound of a ventilator, which I'm guessing was Mary's ventilator. So we've got another one of Kate's radios here. I tried to leave the observatory, but couldn't. I stood at the gates, but couldn't conceive of a world outside. The strangest feeling. As if the valley, Stephen, everything was simply irrelevant. An idea of something, not of something itself. I'm losing track of time. Of whether I'm asleep or awake. My fingers have gone numb at the tips. It's like they still feel. But what they feel is no longer for me. Like the signal has been hijacked. So has Kate perhaps transcended? Has she evolved to their level, maybe? Curious. Well, let's follow Lizzie's erratic signal and see if we can figure out who the other light tangled with her is. Is it Robert and his drinking? Her husband, Robert, with his drinking? Or is it Stephen? Is it her guilt? Who knows? What kind of block is it here? Other people, I'd be interested to know if kids' camps in your areas are uh, just as depressing as this. It's not the most inviting thing ever, is it? I remember, um, so when I lived in Venezuela and Colombia, I used to be in the Girl Guides and the Brownies. And um, there used to be a brownie camp in Venezuela that we went to that was a little bit away. And, um, oh, I can't go out here. Can I go over here? No, it doesn't seem to be. Oh, no? Yeah. So we go to this uh, brownie camp and one of the badges you could get was the polar bear award, which was if you got up at six in the morning and jumped into the lake, which was ice cold. I didn't get that badge. Let's see. Wakey, wakey, little light. You shouldn't be smoking, you know, not in your condition. <sighs> Stephen's fault. He got me started again. I'm not going to try and stop you, but the weather's looking pretty rough. There's a storm coming. That's what Stephen said. He said he'll meet me, but there's things he has to do first. He seems to think that all of this is connected to him. I don't know. I I'm going anyway, whether he comes or not. I'm assuming Stephen has thought of a way through the quarantine. Oh, he's clever. You gotta give him that. Do you trust him, though? Well, I love him. So I'd hope that was good enough. I hope so, too. Listen, if you can't get through, for whatever reason, I'm uh, getting people together at the village hall, rounding up stragglers, that sort of thing. Yeah, I've got all the campers together here, doing a show. Peter Pan. The kids love it. It'll take their minds off things. Hey, did you see that? It's amazing how everyone just knows about those two. No one's actually stopping them. Although I guess, fair enough, people are trying to get them to stop. I'm just going to explore around the back here, although I think it is just a path connecting us to the football court. Di, whatever's wrong, you look terrible. Mrs Graves. Sean's baby Dylan's, are you all right? He's fine. Di, come on. It's OK. Let's get you a cup of tea. Mrs Graves, I need to tell you. Leave it, Di. Try and get out of the valley, all the roads are shut. Down. I know, I was driving really fast, but the other car was on the wrong side of the road, and oh god, I think Die, he's... for fuck's sake, leave it! It's alright. Hey, you're alright. 
Sean's all right, baby Dylan's all right. That is what matters. Everyone's all right. But <laughs> no. No, I need your help. Some of the children, they're getting quite frightened. So Rachel and I, we decided to push forward the show, keep them occupied. You said the other night you play piano. Can you help with that? Yes, yes, I suppose so, but Mr Graves, Rob... Can look after himself. He's a big boy now. Don't worry. Just head to the hall and find Rachel. She'll tell you what needs practising. OK, thank you, Mrs Graves. And yeah, Sean, go and find Reese, please, see if he needs some help. Yeah, of course. Go on. Oh, Robert. So Lizzie's pretty much trying to hold down the fort here. Is she actually feeling some sympathy for her husband now? I'm pretty sure there was a radio around here somewhere, but I can't... Ah, there it is. Uh, I'm guessing it's in this caravan here. This caravan even comes with a little kennel. Gosh, that is posh. No sign of the dogs, though. Right, let's pop in and get out of the cold. Oh, God, Stephen. What's happening to me? It does sound like she is changing into something else. So this is the great British outdoors for you. Guaranteed to happen every time you go on holiday. Those things look part of the boss. Gosh. That's pretty cool. But yeah, I must admit the idea of a caravanning holiday never appealed to me. That and camping, which is probably why something like this is pretty much my vision of hell. <laughs> like, I like being outdoors and I like the green and, and all that, but camping is not for me. The few times that I have done it, I've really not enjoyed sleeping on the ground. I found it quite uncomfortable. I don't like being out in the cold. I don't like using the, you know, camping block toilets because they're so horrible and stinky and there's normally moss growing everywhere in weird places. Um, yeah, so camping, not for me. And caravans, again, not really for me. And I know some people like Alan Partridge would say it's a great sense of freedom you don't get <laughs> in other places, but I'd rather stay in a hotel, frankly. Don't mind the going on hikes and uh, that sort of thing, but yeah. Caravanning, not for me. Also, now that I've seen uh, the film Sightseers, <laughs> I don't think there's any way in hell I can take it seriously anymore. She's not in an office either. Well, they live nearby, don't they? Yeah, in the village. You don't think she's gone to look for Mr. Graves, do you? I think Lizzie knows Robert will turn up when he's sober. He'll be all right. Do you want me to go and look for her? No, it's okay. Come on, I promised the kids another shot the last number, then I promised everyone a cup of tea. You're very like her, you know. Like Lizzie. Me? No, I'm not. First chance I get, I'm out of here. Spooky merry-go-rounds. Oh my god, that's terrifying as well. Jesus wept. So Rachel and Reese there developing their romance that uh, Frank was not up for. Um, I was certain I heard a radio around here somewhere, but I think it's over here somewhere. Uh, let's have a quick look in here. So it seems like weather circumstances were a part of all of this as well. Like there was some crazy weather patterns going on. So these guys really have got a full-scale apocalypse going on right now, really. Dead birds, weather, cows dying, people dying. Hello. All five towers are now operating together, and I've got the reception up to the red zone, but it's not enough. I'm going to try and route the signal through Tower 6 to create a singular point of reception and re-coordinate the optical array, which should, in theory, focus a signal spike on the point of origin. If I conceptualize this origin point as a seventh tower, then it makes a kind of sense. Kind of. I think we're moving so far beyond everything I understand about physics. Anyway, it's got to be worth a shot. Well, that doesn't sound like a bad idea at all. Giving something you don't know about as much power as possible. Oh, look, more dead birds. Um, gosh, this holiday home, is that... Oh, it's just stones. So I'm wondering what it was. 
course, I will be going on holiday soon. Yay! I will be going home to Penang, and I cannot wait. I am so excited. And uh, a little bit of pimpage, but I got a lot of uh, stuff for you guys. Ready for you guys to keep you tidied over while I'm away, because it's going to be a good long break. To be honest, if I could, I would take a lot longer. Um, because it's rare that I manage to get to go home to Malaysia. Um, but, oh well. Such is life. Maybe I'll move back there in the future. Okay, hello. Are you talking to me or are you just... Oh wait, no, you are talking to me. Where do I need to tip you to? This side... Notice how Kate isn't involved in any of this section. It's Kate. Oh, she is now. Elizabeth? Busy. I've heard a lot about you. It's good, you know, you and Emma, it's not difficult or anything. Should it be? I'm sorry? You said it wasn't difficult. I don't see why it would be difficult. You and Stephen were together a long time ago. We moved away. It certainly isn't difficult for me. I I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you or... Well, I'm not offended. Listen, Elizabeth... But I... Lizzie, please. <laughs> Lizzie. Right. You seem like an okay type of person. And I'm not trying to be rude, I promise. But let's try and be realistic here, huh? Let's, um, try and do our best. It's a British thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I suppose it is. We'll do our best then. Awkward! Awkward! 